to get on the phone and take the money out of your pocket. Don't go to the pub tonight, please. Stay in and give us the money. There are people dying now, so give me the money. As you know, Oxfam has been really sponsoring us and financing us for the last six years. And we really, really love the collaboration that we have with them. And also I want to introduce, uh, and I hope they will stand up, Nick Fraser and Mette Hoffman Meyer, who are two of the initiators of this whole project, White Poverty. <laughs> and it's not only the two of them, it's also Don Atkins, who I would like to ask her to stay. Thanks, Ellie. This is one of the three films that Oxfam chose to present in Chuchinsky One, and they all have the chance to win this Global Justice Award. Monday night was um, Rafia, so the mama. Last night was Poor Us, and tonight give us the money. These films are part of the White Poverty Project of eight long and 30 short films. And starting this Sunday, the 25th of November, they will be going out on broadcasters, 70 plus broadcasters are going to be screening these films. That's a huge audience. And of course it took us quite a while to figure out what kind of films to make. Because it's not just about what can we do, what, what, how can we deal with poverty, but what concrete actions should be done to make sure that poverty does not exist in the form that it is today, the huge inequality that is on the rise in so many parts of the world. Thank you. Thirty years ago, two young rock stars set out to challenge the world. This is the story of how Bob Geldof and Bono used their celebrity status to take on the wiliest politicians on earth to try to end poverty in Africa. How can they refuse us? Can I invite up to the stage Jamie Drummond and Bruce Lindquist, please? So first of all, thank you. Um, and, and secondly, um, there's two things I really liked about it. Um, one is that it sort of, it, it, I hope it showed that Bob and Bono, for all of their Irishness and their faults, um, they're committed, right? They're in this for the long haul. Also, I think it shows that, you know, while there's been ups and downs, there's been overall progress. I think that's critically important. That there were two things in the 80s. There was, of course, the response to the famine, but there was the anti-apartheid campaign, and that's really what drove them both mostly into these issues, got them to know Tutu, got them to be inspired by Mandela, and it was those two, Tutu and Mandela in particular, who kept them involved and, and sort of forced them to stay involved, forced them to listen to me, really, when I was asking them to get involved in debt cancellation and setting up data and one. And so sometimes when it comes across that they're kind of hanging out there by themselves, they're unaccountable, and they weren't asked to be involved. I, I, I balk a little bit of that, uh, that sense because I know that they were, they were lobbied by leaders in Africa to be involved and campaign on these issues. Well, that's great. Thanks, uh, Jamie. I'm sure there are lots of questions. Um, <clears throat> but before we go to the audience, what's a, I mean, a very powerful film, incredibly well-researched, what were you, the main challenges that you came up against? Well, there were a couple of them. I mean, uh, starting off uh, getting access was, of course, quite diff difficult. It took some time before we met person to person the first time. And when you do a film about people who are world famous and the world importance, you can't email them, you can't, there's no telephone number to call. You have to pass, you have to suss out who to talk to, to, to then find the next person to talk to, and then eventually sometimes get, get to the person that you want to talk to. I think for me, I just mentioned that, that it started for me really when I was 19 and I, I hated school, I hated my family, I hated my upbringing. So I hitchhiked to Kenya, and, and in, from Sweden, and in Kenya I got a job and started teaching in a local secondary school, a rural secondary school by Lake Victoria. I, I think I learned how to teach uh, 
so so, but basically uh, people that taught me more, I think. And, and one of the things is that I've ever since then wondered about how an outsider can affect change. Is it possible? What, what to do? Uh, how can you make development aid function? The basic premise of your film is that if you mobilize masses through celebrities, you can achieve results with politicians. Now what I miss in your film though is that over the last few years in an economic crisis in Europe and the West in general, um, there might be not as strong as the mandate across the masses to mobilize politicians to work because we have problems, economic problems, especially in Europe right now ourselves. The theory we work through and the sort of tactics we've developed over the last couple of decades of working together is a mixture of inside influence um, and outside mobilization. And you know, you can get a lot done by on a developing relationships with key politicians, and it's not just him, it's a lot of other people too who, who do that. Um, but it has no legitimacy if there aren't millions of people calling for what they're asking for at the same time. We welcome and encourage the debate um, about, about these issues despite the financial crisis and in fact bring them on. And what it has done is accelerated what was happening anyway, which is the rapid rise of emerging economies and frankly people looking again at Africa and seeing what's really happening there, which is surging economic growth rate. The, the Visa Moya in that uh, quote is precisely wrong and actually in some ways the, the financial crisis has helped bring, bring on some of that and bring it into sharper focus and in that sense you know, we welcome that debate. I think the question is also about the, the changing demographics of poverty, you know, the new poor um, arising in, in the United States, the new poor arising in Europe, the new wealth arising in the developing world. India saying, well, we don't need your foreign aid anymore, you know. So what are causing these changes and, and who's responsible for them? And I think that's also part of the greater debate. Do we have some more questions coming off the floor? Let's tackle the solutions and forget about the problems. Poverty is a problem. Now this film has really enlightened and opened so many areas of our discourse. As time goes on, I'm sure it's going to make a good impact. Congratulations. Thank you. I think one point I'd like to make is that it's true. I mean, economic is are hard now in Europe and in many other places, but I think we are pretty rich still, aren't we? I mean, we're sitting here in this room and looking at this beautiful hall, and what we're talking about eradicating extreme poverty, which is something completely different from what just about anyone in Europe ever experiences. I want to say something, you mentioned extreme poverty and poverty here. We are talking in our organization about extreme poverty. It's a specific empirical condition of living under $1.25 cents a day. It is trending down, not fast enough, but it's trending down faster than it ever has in history before. So everyone who laughed at make poverty history for its simplicity. If you put extreme before the word poverty, make extreme poverty history, actually, we could be that generation that Mandela asked us to be, who could get extreme poverty to be history by approximately 2030. Well, it's also about how you, you read data. I mean, um, the World Bank has often got their figures wrong, I think. And, um, you know, when you talk about poverty in $1.25 or $2, you talk about $2, you talk about $3 a day. I mean, these are pretty low figures. And if we're talking $2 a day, then we know that there's a third of the world that is still living in poverty. So, I mean, did this really change the world? Did it just start something? How are we really going to change the world? I think we've got some microphones. There's a question over here. What do you both think? If it were all to start again, could it be done? I know that it was a creature of its time. And it is a, you know, we, we all said it. It is a travesty. It is absurd and it is nonsense that issues this important require celebrity to sugarcoat them and slip them into the mainstream without people realizing it. It is absurd. But that is currently the world we live in. History tends to go in circles, doesn't it? And things repeat themselves. So who knows? But, but I think the, the, the world has changed vastly since 1984. And internet has revolutionized the world, obviously, in a way that we are aware of each other in a way that we never were before. Though, the problem with the internet and with the globalization is that we're all looking at this square screen and everybody's fighting to get in it. And the way TV works, it's not really an intellectual media, YouTube is not really intellectual. And we, we are sort of stone age people, aren't we, with, with reptile brains or, or something similar. But what we go for when we look at the screen is a face that we recognize. I think it behooves us now to find new ways to connect people with, with some celebrity, but also just with creative campaigning and storytelling, um, 
to, to, to take full advantage of the new technologies we have. We talked about structural changes and I think the whole white poverty project is starting to try and get people to understand that it's the structural changes that we need to address and if we can do that with the power and the energy and the youth coming out of the southern part of the world who will lead us and help make this change, I think it's, it's really, that's where we're going to be going. And it's been hard for African activists, for African intellectuals to get a voice uh, here, but it's changing. And I think it's a sign of the times that, that your organization also has been changing. I mean, it has been evolving. You are gradually uh, having a greater presence in Africa, etc. We said this is a thank you from IFA for your film and uh, from me and my colleagues and everybody here. Thank you very much. Jamie, thank you for coming. Thank you for participating. And we look forward to some more discussions tomorrow at the White Poverty Day at the Baraka Front.